Good morning, good morning, good morning, all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another glorious edition of Real Talk with Carl and Charlene. And as always, we got another fabulous guest with us on today. And I just want to welcome everyone that is watching on the live. Please let us know where you're tuning in from. Drop it in the comments because this is a global show and we have people from all over the world tuning in. Whatever you put in the comments, we will bring them up. We will highlight them. We will address them, drop your questions or anything you got going on. It is a happy Thursday for me because it is my pre-birthday day. So tomorrow's my birthday. I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. Virgos in the house. Love all of you Virgos that may be watching. But today... We're going to kick it off. And, of course, I cannot do this on my own, guys. You know I got my sidekick, my roadie, my homie, Miss Charlene Brown. What's up, lady? How are you? Hey, what's What's up? What's going on? (laughs) That's about much as we going to get you guys. What's up? That's what we get. You know how we roll. You know how we roll. We get that smile. We get that hello. What's up, man? We go forward today. But we got an amazing guest on today. Um. We have kind of watched her uh, from, she's been in the Growth Academy with us. She's done on some some amazing things with us. I've just seen the, the sproutness of that. You know, sometimes you just watch people and you see the glow and you see the difference and you see who's getting it. And it's a good thing when you see people get it. And I have seen her get it and she has just been going. Her trajectory has been up ever since, you know, but she's going to join us today because she wants to tell us. How are we going to level up our career game? You know we bring facts to you today. You know we bring stuff on the real talk. She's going to give us some real insight into how we're going to level up. We're going to bring her to the stage the phenomenal Lisa Apaya. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank good, you so much. Good, good, Thanks good. For having me. Yes, yes, we got you. We got you. We got you. Yes. Um, the, the, the certified resume. Like when I saw this, right, I'm going to jump on this and I'm going to let Charlene ask you a few things as well. Uh, when I first saw that that title, like, because, you know, I'm, I'm a title guy. So I started looking and seeing people's titles and, and see it because you saw, I saw some, I know, some craziness of what people calling themselves on LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> I, I, I think people just like, I start dictionary and people like, yo, is that, is that even a word? Like, uh, you know, are you just putting something on there? But when I saw certified resume, it kind of like, like, and I know resumes is good, but how you get to be a certified resume at Carista? <laughs> I mean, like somebody just going around with the books, like checking you off, making you certified. <laughs> Explain me a little bit about that, Lisa. Okay, sounds good. Uh, once again, thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's I really my pleasure. appreciate it. And uh, in terms of getting certified, I have been helping family members, friends with their career path, writing resumes, just giving advice for quite some time. Uh, I would say, you know, at least <laughs> since I was, I, I started working myself, so at least the 15 years or something like that. But uh, about 10 years ago, I decided to start a group in my church, and that's when it kind of took off. It was a, a group of professionals, and we would organize different career seminars and, and things along those lines. And eventually it picked up from there. And last year I decided, okay, I want to make this official. I want to make this my career path. And uh, so I got certified. And uh, so there are certain courses that I took to be able to get certified as a resume strategist, as well as a career strategist. And yeah, and as you said, things have, have, picked up from there (laughs) yes that certification makes it real so everybody who's watching out there i'm putting you on notice now if you not got the certified next to your resume and career stuff going on i'm not fooling with you if you ain't certified i'm just putting it out there (laughs) so we got certified on there what's going on charlie what's going on with you today girlfriend man it's been a whirlwind um week (laughs) Uh, but it's been productive. I'm trying to stay focused. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. But hearing you, Lisa, when you're saying that you help people and, and you really got started helping family and friends, a lot of times we don't count that on our journey. We we do it because it's easy or it feels simple to us, almost like a no-brainer. Yeah. So when did it really click for you that you, for you um, should be transitioning from friends to actual, you know, customers, clients, because now you felt, yes, this is something that I can um, do well and make money from. 
I would say the transition was gradual in the sense that it did take me quite some time to actually decide to pursue this as a business. Uh, it is something that comes very naturally to me. So initially, honestly, I didn't even know that career coaching was was a thing. Like I didn't know it was uh, that you can start that as a business and you can help people uh, in terms of advancing in their career. So. Uh, it was through my research and talking to different people that I, I realized that it was uh, a profession. But I would say the moment that clicked is I've had different interactions with people where they, you know, I've helped them maybe land a job or land a promotion and they would tell me things like, okay, you need to do this. You need to help more people. You need to start something. But, you know, I I, I have a stable job in the sense that, you know, things were okay. I did, <laughs> There was no point for me to go and, you know, shake things and, and start a business and all that but last year I really made the decision uh, that it was time a lot of it also was fear just fear of the unknown going in and starting a business not really you know understanding what would happen or how would people respond to it so uh, for many years instead of just taking that step I decided to you know just stay in the background and, and just help people that way but it was more something that I had to work on myself first and once I worked on myself and realized it was something I could do and do well I, I decided to put myself out there I love that because as a fellow introvert, <laughs> um, what I loved hearing about, um, especially seeing you, you've been on um, these videos and we've been also part of the video challenge with Shanae, but you've been doing these amazing videos um, and, and you can see the progression through your videos. So as an introvert, how did you really take it um, all the way and just go, you know, into full throttle and actually helping people through the videos because you also give amazing strategies um, through your videos as well. Uh, you know, it's something that I, I tell my clients, you just have to do it. You just have to make up your mind that you're going to do it, decide that you're going to be visible, you're going to make your voice heard. We all have a contribution that, that matters. We all do it in our different ways, but in the way that we do it, it can speak to someone. And so it's important for us to make our voice heard so that those people who are, are waiting to hear from us can get that message that they wanted to hear. And so the crowd that I speak to may not be the same crowd that another career coach speaks to, but they are receiving that message and it's impacting their life. So, you know, when I think of it like that, I, I, I realize that it, this is actually bigger than myself. You know, it's bigger than me just deciding, oh, I'm going to help some people, you know, with their resumes or help some people with, with coaching. It's actually changing lives. Like some people are telling me I was able to buy my first house. Someone told me recently they bought a car, you know, just things that are, you know, someone also told me that they helped um, a parent who, who was quite ill and they were able to support them because now they have additional income through a promotion they received. So all these things just made me realize that it's not just about the resume. It's not just about, you know, implementing the strategy. It's actually about changing lives. And so for me, um, as an introvert, it, what I would tell someone in the same situation is you just have to do it. You know, a lot of times we know what we should be doing, but we're just hesitant to take that step to make it a reality. And once you take the first step, all the other steps after will come. So it's all about just taking that first step and everything will follow from there. I love that. Yeah, <clears throat> I definitely love that because I, I never had that problem. And I don't call it a problem. Let me let me backtrack with that because uh, introverts. I grew up with one. My brother was one, and I saw the church. The church actually, and I think he was more introverted because um, he he used to stutter as a kid, and um, like he was just it was just like a shameful thing for him. And a lot of times, you know, with him being my baby brother, a lot of times I had to like jump into things and like you know stop people from picking on him and things of that nature. So it kind of weighed on him. But you, as a kid, you never really know how the process of that plays out, and a lot of things that he was kind of like like you know me seeing him grow from how he went and i was like dude like a lot of questions was unanswered to me like why you didn't excel at this why you didn't do that i know you because i'm your brother so why mm -hmm. you know but there being an introvert sometimes when people don't understand that it can be a, a struggle in the essence of just actually going and do it mm 
Mm-hmm. When you find the people that you're working with and the ones that come up, what are some of the, like the struggles that you deal with? Cause I know like career, when I think of resume, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like the, the, the knob on the doorway, like it, like if that knob is not great enough for me to get through the door, I can't open it. And so what are some of the struggles that you doing resumes and you seeing that, that people are constantly doing, not aware that's on there, need to change. What are some of those struggles that people go through with that? Yeah, in terms of resume specifically, I think a big thing right now is that a lot of people just uh, follow templates that they find online and or they just use you know a template or a, a resume that they've been using for the last 10 years last 15 years and they just keep updating it but you know the job market is evolving and and as well as how you look for work is also evolving and so you know the resume is one tool and it is an important one but there's so many other things that you need to do as well so one of the biggest mistakes that i see people make is they they have a resume and they're just sending it to a bunch of places um not necessarily having a plan or a strategy in place and uh this brings a lot of frustration frustration because you're just randomly applying and not seeing the results. So uh, that's a big mistake that I see a lot of professionals making. And it's important to understand that, yes, your resume is a tool, but you also have a responsibility to be proactive in your job search. It's, It's not just about sending the resume, but also reaching out to people, connecting with people who are in your industry. Uh, LinkedIn, you know, as we all know, is a great place to, to meet people and to connect. You know, if it wasn't for LinkedIn, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's a great resource and definitely for jobs, you know, people who are looking for, for jobs, this is a place to be and to actually approach people in your industry, start a conversation, build a relationship. But in addition to that, just your own network. You know, we all know people, whether it's someone you went to school with or a previous boss, a previous colleague. Uh, sometimes networking is not, uh, you know, people that you don't know and you're getting to know. But within your immediate network as well, there are people who once you start having a conversation with them, you'll realize are willing to help you. So the resume is just one step, it's one tool, but there are so many other layers that I often see professionals don't um, pay attention to and they're just focusing on sending the resume to a bunch of places. And I like that you said that because especially, um, I've been at my nine to five uh, over 21 years, same same time as I've learned to um, actually develop a skill for develop web development and design. So I kind of been multitasking without realizing it and, right. and leveling up another skill set that I don't always use on my nine to five. However, as we all see the pandemic kind of forced a lot of people to kind of shift from their comfort zones of their nine to fives. A lot of people were let go. Um, a lot of people were kind of tenured if, if you um, really think about it. So how can those people, my people, I would say, who've been in their jobs for over 20 years, never really had a need to look for something else, how, what's, what's maybe like the top three things you would help tell us that would help us really improve our resumes, but also improve our chances of getting another job that's probably even paying more? That's a really good question. And, you know, especially I would say last year, a lot of my clients were in that situation. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is the first thing is to even before you start job searching or writing your resume or anything like that, just take a step back and take the time to reflect on your career. There's so many things that we have achieved in our careers that we often overlook. So what I often recommend to my clients is just take the time to write down some stories, stories of things that they've accomplished in their career. And, um, you know, uh, writing maybe 10, 15 different instances where you were proud of something that you did, or you went above and beyond to do something, uh, or you got an award, something you got recognition for, just these success stories, write them down. And often when they take the time to do this, what they will see is that there are patterns. There are certain things that are repeated. And from there, they're able to draw out what are the skills, the strengths that they have, and this will help them to develop their, what we call a value 
composition or even from their build, their personal brand, which is what they need if they're showcasing themselves. You know, if you've been in a, in a certain industry for 20 years, most likely you are not necessarily active on LinkedIn or you're not, you know, participating online. So um, d doing this homework ahead of time will help once you get to the part of writing your resume. It'll help when you get to updating your LinkedIn profile. So that's the first thing I would say, just taking the time to sit down and reflect on your career, write down all your career stories, write down your achievements, and doing this ahead of time will help with the next steps. Um, another thing I would say also, I know that, you know, um, people sometimes feel like you, you know, organizations are looking for maybe younger people. And so they sometimes um, hesitate to put themselves out there. They just, you know, would rather not. And I've come across this a lot with a lot of my clients, you know, they tell me things like I'm too old or, you know, nobody's gonna hire me. I've been in the same job for so many years. And, you know, something I tell them is that the right organization that wants your skill set, that wants your background and your expertise, you will find them. But it's just a matter of you positioning yourself for them to find you or for you to find them. So we shouldn't put limitations on ourselves as well. You know, and if that's something I see a lot that people, before they even start the job search, they already say, I, I don't have this, I can't do this. And how about if they ask me about this experience? I'm good in marketing, but not that good in social media. And then they start putting it picking in terms of what they can do and can't do so that's another thing i would say that people shouldn't do and the last thing to, to the third point is talk to people talk to as many people as you can uh, reach out to your network and and keep letting people know where you're at in your career and sometimes it just takes that one person that's like oh yeah i heard something somebody's looking for a job here and they can connect you to that so just keep talking to people Awesome. Yeah, because I I was I've been getting um, offers. I got a um, an offer to apply to a six figure position, but the thing the caveat for me was they wanted me to move, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> not for something I'm not too sure about. I'll have to see, you know, let me let me feel this out a little bit. Um, so for for people who are, they want to make that jump, they want to make that move. How can you um, really tell them? Because I know uh, something else too on top, to kind of layer into this question. A lot of us were using LinkedIn wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like our second or I think about ninety nine percent. Yeah, we were using I, it. I can't find anybody. I'm sure somebody may have close to the whoever produced this was probably using it right, but yeah. I can't say ninety nine percent of the people that had a LinkedIn account. They was not using it correctly at all. Right. So, they, so a lot of us were using it like the professional Facebook, where, hey, I know you. Let's connect. <laughs> Let's do this. And then, and a lot of times you end up connecting with bosses, other um, VIPs, you know, or VPs, things like that. So now, when you're saying to yourself, "All right, let me see what's out here. Um, let me use these new things that LinkedIn will start to create for us, like the badges saying that you're looking for work or stuff like that." A lot of us can't do that <laughs> because we're connected <laughs> to certain people. So, how do we really m make those moves and maneuver to say, "Hey, guys, I'm looking, but you guys don't pay no mind to this. So I just want to, I just want to feel what's out here." So how can they um, confidently go out there, put their best foot forward without alerting um, their superiors that, oh, somebody might be jumping ship? <laughs> Yeah, and that's a question I get asked a lot. Um, ex well, I would say that LinkedIn has also changed in the sense that now you can turn off like the settings and in, in, in terms of your notification. So people won't get notified that you've updated your profile or anything like that. I know that was a big concern a couple of years ago because you make one edit to your profile and it tells your whole network. The whole network knows, right? <laughs> you get a whole bunch of congratulations on your new yeah, network. I, can, no, I like, just updated it. <laughs> Yeah, and I had to find it out the hard way. I didn't up when I started my company and I put that in. I, I forgot about the settings because I wasn't using LinkedIn. Okay. I had about 1,300, 1,400 congratulations messages. I was like, oh, snap, I didn't change. <laughs> Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot. And it's one of the reasons I would say I feel like a lot of professionals 
stayed away from updating their profile because they didn't want everybody to know. You don't want your boss to be like, wait, you like, why are you updating your profile? <laughs> like, are you going somewhere? Um, so, so yeah, the settings are very important right now. Just pay attention to that. You can turn off the notifications and, you know, you can update your profile. At the end of the day, it is your personal profile. You are not tied to one company. You're not tied to one employer. So with that in mind, um, it's actually sometimes a benefit also to the organization that you work for, for you to update your profile. Because if you're going, you're updating your profile, you're active on LinkedIn, people are going to go to your profile and see, oh, they work here and they may visit the organization's page. So, um, you know, just thinking of it as an employer, this is actually visibility for you in terms of you know, using your employees branding or using their own personal platforms to increase yours. And that's often what I tell employers who are hesitant about their employees being on LinkedIn is that you have to look at it more strategically. This is exposure for you. Um, your employees have a huge network that you may not be able to access. Let's say you're hiring for a role, you can leverage your employees network for that. And so, um, you know, from the employer pe perspective, you should definitely encourage your employees to be on LinkedIn. And if it happens that they do get a role out of it, you know, we should be happy for them. It's, it's exactly. advancement. <laughs> they're, they're moving forward. And, and you know, it's, it's a benefit at the end of the day for everyone involved. So it's a win-win. And uh, so, you know, what I would say to that is people shouldn't feel like they're doing something wrong because they're updating their LinkedIn profile. Um, at the end of the day, you are in control of your career and you are in control of, of the next steps you want to take. Maybe you want to stay in a role for quite some time because you have things going on in your life you want to focus on. That's okay. But if you also want to move up quickly, that is also okay. You just have to make a plan as to what you want to do in your career and follow that plan and, and you know, not sit back and kind of think somebody else is controlling it, but just have um, your plan in mind and, and execute it. Exactly. And I love that because oftentimes we, we forget that a lot of our jobs are at will employment. So just as the employer can fire at will, the employees can let, let themselves go <laughs> at will. So it's like, um, the, the, the days of loyalty or this perceived loyalty are over. And I think a lot of um, people, especially in my generation or, or even before me, always feel like, oh, well, why are you leaving? You're, you, you know, <laughs> something wrong? Like, um, did they let you go? Like, it's like, no, like, I want to explore. <laughs> want to go, no. Or they're not even giving that free time because now you have, of course, the burnout because so many of us are working from home. So there, there's that, um, that assumption that because the people who have been there the longest are pretty much your your want some of your more reliable people mm -hmm. they tend to be your more burnt out people because they're thrown mm -hmm. all these projects they're thrown a lot of a lot more responsibilities and expectations so how can we um get these same employees who are feeling burnt out who are feeling overwhelmed or maybe even undervalued and especially if they're introverts such as myself <laughs> how do we um pretty much level up our career game and either get our current employers to recognize our true value and either give us more leeway for managing our times ourselves, or how do we get other prospects um, to find interest and value in us? Yeah, what I would say to that is, you know, if your environment is not changing, then you need to change your environment because at the end of the day, you need to do what is best for you. You need to do what is going to help you, help your family, help you um, become the best version of yourself. And staying in a workplace that is either toxic or, you know, that you're not um, being able to present your best self every day is not good to your mental health. And so at some point you need to make the decision. And, you know, it can be a difficult decision to make, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are doing something that is um, like you're being disloyal. It's actually just you 
thinking of yourself and putting what is best for yourself and, and your, your immediate family um, first. And why I mention family a lot is because some, you know, a lot of times I'm talking to my clients and something they tell me is that their family is the first people who are gonna get it because they go to work the whole day and then they're, you know, they just go with the flow, whatever, they're not airing out their frustrations, but then they clock out and then it's the family <laughs> that receives the frustration from everything they experience in the day. So you also want to keep that in mind that you don't want to be in that cycle. And so, you know, the most important thing is that you put an exit plan into play, have a strategy as to how you're going to navigate the situation. And moving doesn't actually mean like you have to go to a completely different company. Maybe sometimes within the company, there's a better group, like a different division that you can move to. Maybe you have, uh, you're in a role and you can take a same a similar role at level that maybe has a little bit more benefits that can help support you with what you want. But the most important thing is you need to know what you want. It's not just about, you know, okay, I'm in a bad situation, but what do you really want? What do you want out of it? You need to know that and then kind of take the steps to get where you want to be. Yes. Yeah, now, Lisa, so you've been giving us amazing, amazing <laughs> strategies so we can um, really level ourselves up. I want you to also share with our community and yours, what do you have coming up and where can they really connect with you? <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So I ha am working on a resume writing course. It's an online course that's going to be launching in September. So uh, people can look out for that. And then I do have um, a group coaching program that uh, comes up every three months. And the next cohort is starting in October. It's called uh, Work Smart, Get Promoted. And it's for the underdog promotion seeker who wants to shock everyone who said they couldn't. And this is really based on something that I've experienced often in my career. Um, I, you know, I've had a successful career where I've been able to move up five times in eight years. And um, as a, a result of that, I've also experienced a lot of comments or, or negativity from people who thought I couldn't do it. And so uh, I know a lot of people experience that in their career as well. And this course is really about developing a visibility strategy to help professionals move up in their career. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm up to now. And I'd be happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Lisa Appia with two S's. <laughs> so I'll be happy to connect. <laughs> And Lisa is a value um, to have on your side, having your community. She is amazing um, and always ready, ready to support you, cheer you on. I just love Lisa. <laughs> yes. um, Carl, any other questions? Because I do know Lisa also has a, a yes, she so got I want, she want got to make sure we get as much out of you because we're coming yeah, back to because we're not going to do the part two. Part yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> we got so many part um, twos. I don't know how we're going to get through all that. For sure. For sure. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, uh, I, 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 I see a panel in Lisa's future. I'm just trying to yes. map out the yes, people in the panel. But yeah, I see a panel coming up. So yes. <laughs> we're going to do a, we're going to do a couple sure. of good panels. And you mentioned a, a, a lot of good things that we're definitely going to come back to those because you mentioned strategy and as Charlene was talking about how beforehand it used to be and, and I was part of that group as well looked at people like you know if you was at positions and always thought to be in positions you were kind of like loyal and that's just my personal thing I was just loyal too but now we got this new this I wouldn't even say new age just this new thinking now that people are kind of like you remind me of the sports figures I'm signing whatever contract I want to because we'll have the best for my family. I'm not caring about the teams no more. And uh, with the strategy, it has become so important now, even with what you're saying with moving to another career. Because I didn't hear the term strategy uh, as far as jobs and moving and what you had in place. Your strategies with your company as far as reports and progress. Yes. But you never had, we've putting them on ourselves now to come up with those. And I want you to talk about just a little bit before you go, because I know you got to go, but we can even cover that. That strategy, how is important is that even in the career base mm -hmm. of understanding, because you mentioned that, understanding where, where do I want to go? Like, I don't even have a plan, like, but I, I'm tired of this company and I, I want to move. Yeah, that's a really good question. And, you know, it'll depend on every person because everyone has their own story. 
everyone has their own path and they they kind of know or you want to discover what they want out of their career. So in terms of building a strategy, it's more you focusing on where you want to go, knowing where you want to go. So whether it's a promotion, you want to make a career change, identifying what that final destination is, and then looking at where you are right now and establishing what you need to do to get where you want to be. So there's different ways of doing it. Let's say, for example, you are aiming for a promotion. Something that you can do is that you can look at job posters that are a couple of levels above where you are, and then you can start to identify what are the skills, what are the um, qualifications that you need to get to that level and start putting a plan into place now. It's not when you want the promotion that you're going to start figuring out how do I get it, it's when in your current role now, starting to know that, okay, they're looking, the next step, they're looking for someone who has three years of experience in this. And so I only have one. So now I'm going to look for projects or I'm going to look for opportunities within what I'm currently doing. Or if it's not part of my current scope of work, I'm going to look for volunteering opportunities or whatever that's going to help me get those number of years of experiences to get where I want to be. Or let's say maybe they're looking for a certain skill set that you don't have that takes you to the next level. You can start putting a plan into place right now to get where you want to be. And that's how you start thinking of your career more strategically. It's not really about where you are right now. It's about where you want to be. If you know that you're, you want to make a career change, understanding what are the requirements for that industry. You need to actually do your research, understand what the in industry requirements are. You can have maybe a, a, a list of companies that you're targeting. So let's say you're targeting 10 to 15 companies, write down those companies, write down the specific job titles that you're targeting, and then you know start making connections with the people who are working in that company that are aligned with the job title that you're looking for. So these are some of the ways that people can start thinking of their career more strategically, not just, you know, waiting to, to, to see what happens. You know, you're working hard, so you're like, oh, my boss is going to give me a promotion or something like that. Start putting things into place now to get you where you want to be. And then as you're doing that, let people know. It's not just you're, you're, you're creating your strategy and you're doing it all by yourself in your corner. Tell people, this is what I'm doing. You know, tell people on LinkedIn, I just, you know, made this move in my career. I'm now working on this project. Let your boss know regularly when you're having those performance review conversations. Let them know like, hey, in the last six months, this is what I've been doing. You know, I'm ready now for that next move. So you're constantly letting them know so that that top of mind awareness is there. Because at the end of the day, your boss is also thinking of their own career. They have other things that, <laughs> that they have in mind. They're not necessarily thinking about you all the time in your career progression. So, so yeah, so those are some of the examples of how um, someone can put a strategy into place to help them level up. Man, that's good stuff right there, man. I feel like, I feel like I'm about to put that into play right now. Because <laughs> our, our friend Wallace had a great show um, talking to recruiters. And okay. one of the topics they were talking about was how long does it take to um, send out a reply? So mm -hmm. what should people expect? Because sometimes I might get indignant. If, if it's four days, I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to write that off because I'm not having anything. So what is a typical or realistic timeline for people to expect to start hearing back, either if it's a, a, a promotion or a, a brand new position? What is normal? What's the normal um, turnaround for that? I'd say there isn't a normal turnaround because it just depends on the industry. And then it also depends on the individual. There are certain industries like you know that it's going to take months before you hear back. So you don't need to bother yourself too much because you know that's how long it's going to take. But then there are certain industries that it, it's quicker. So uh, what I would really say is, for example, if somebody's connecting with something on LinkedIn, uh, someone on LinkedIn, what I always recommend is check how active the person is on LinkedIn. If you're going to their activity and you're seeing they haven't posted anything, they haven't liked anything in a year, two years years, most likely they're not going to respond to you just because they're not on LinkedIn, you know, so that may not be the best way to contact them. So always like 
do a little bit of background research and see are they actually active on LinkedIn. If you see them posting every day, every two days, at least once a week, you see them liking something, at least that gives you an indication that the person is actually active on LinkedIn and that is a, a good way to reach out to them. But, you know, in terms of of applying for an opportunity and when they get back to you that is something that you can ask at the end of the interview you know what are the next steps when should i expect to hear back and that can sometimes give you an indication of how long it's going to take um but you can definitely follow up that's something that you can definitely do if it's been a some time you can follow up to find out what's going on so what are some of the common myths in resume land because i know um because before we had to get that special paper um, <laughs> yeah, okay, that nobody else printed at that time and yeah. then print your print your resumes out um but because of technology a lot of things are changing one are paper resumes even required what's the typical layout and of course the all do we still need a business card what are some of those um myths that normally are in your industry that you have to fight Sure. Um, you know, paper resume, it's it's not dead in the sense that there are <laughs> there are certain places that they may require a paper resume. I would say it's extremely rare, but it can happen. Uh, it can happen, especially depending on like the level you're applying for. Sometimes they may ask for it. So it it's not completely dead, but very close to it. Uh, most of the things, as you said, are happening online right now. So most of the time you're sending your application online or you're sending it by email. Um, some of the myths regarding resumes, I would say that's a good one. Um, I think the one page resume is a big myth that a lot of people have. Um, your resume doesn't need to be a page. There are certain industries, like sometimes in the tech industry, there are certain companies that require a one page. But what I would say is um, make sure you understand your industry and make sure you also read the job poster. Your resume doesn't need to be one page. You don't need to stuff everything into one page, especially if you're a professional that has several years of experience. You um, you can extend it to two pages, a page and a half. The most important thing you always want to keep in mind is keep the information relevant. If it's relevant to the target, if it's relevant to what the employer is looking for, include it. And, and so, you know, there's the other extreme as well where people have resumes that are like four or five, six pages, and it's just like a lot of stuff that you you don't need you need to take the time to see what is actually um, important and relevant and narrow it down to maybe like the last 10 to 15 years of experience and be you know look at it more from from that angle as opposed to thinking it's one page i'm going to stuff everything in one page or the other extreme is like oh my resume is like six pages long so you have to you have to find that uh, that balance <laughs> people still got resume books <laughs> all of those pages it's, it, um, it is I know you got to go it has been such a pleasure uh, chatting with you and learning I mean like I just felt like I learned so much in like about 40 minutes man and yeah. that I've known from a long time even long as I've been in the work world like you told me some things that I never gave two seconds thought about <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, and my strategy for moving up in my company was like go after the person's job I wanted. So I just, was going okay. to, I just was going to do more. I'm serious. I didn't have no like. I didn't like go to my bosses with no look. This is what I'm doing. Like I went if they had a project that I liked, I kind of like fought my way into that project. Kind of like took it over and outshined them. Like you know, I did those things like that because I was like systematic. I, I was kind of like that's that army thinking. It was kind of like I know I get in, engage, do my thing. But yes, you gave us some technical things of which a lot of people, uh, I can tell you from a shadow of doubt, I talked to a lot of people, they didn't know those kind of insights of what you've given us today. They had no idea, like in those plans and those steps. Because a lot of us, showtime, like we don't have steps. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. we, we really don't. Like we really, we, we say we put together, of course, we know what we're doing. We've done the job. We're, we're educated mm -hmm. into the fact. But when it comes to like putting things together and plans and steps and being like a lot of adults, just we just don't have it. I, I don't know what it is. I, I'm not ashamed to say it. It's a growing thing. Because <laughs> Charlene has started me with those 
uh, strategies, boy. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I thought that what that word meant big time. If, if I'm learning nothing else from the pandemic, I've learned strategy. Oh my god, I, like, I got away from. I said, yeah, I took this step. They like, no, it's a strategy. You had to, so I'm strategy educated now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Great, great having you all, Lisa. Charlene, you got anything to us out? No, I'm just thankful for everybody for joining us again for another yes. amazing show. Yes. If you want to be featured, please hit us up. We will drop the link um, so you too can be featured and spotlighted. Uh, my my fifth, I think, episode of my podcast, Transform Clicks to Profit, dropped today. So go listen. If you want to know the difference between a website designer, developer, and an architect, Yes. Listen, so you can really get into it, understand who to hire, and you can be in a better position rather than frustrated. <laughs> yes, because I definitely got to put that out to the frustration. I always got to get Charlene her props, you know what I'm saying? She got my website looking good. I've dropped the application in there for anybody that want to join, but go check her out. She got a lot of things going on. Lisa has been amazing. Her LinkedIn is on the bottom. Please please check in with her. Like she has some awesomeness and just not only that, you're going to get educated. Yeah. I mean, if you sit down with the strategy with her, I mean, you're going to know things that you did not know before they're taken from me. I'm going to tell you, yes, agree with yeah. me, agree with me, agree <laughs> with us. Real talk. That's what we do. That's and soak in her are. videos. Soak in her yes, videos. Yes. Really, soak them in. Uh, soak See the them cur- in. Especially when she got the curls out. I'm like, oh, yeah, when she <laughs> just like, she just like bossing it. Like that's, that's that like, pay attention, homie. I got you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay attention to that. You gotta pay attention to that. These are our vibes. This is what we do. This is who we are. Real talk with Carl and Charlene, my amazing guest Lisa on today. Charlene, you gonna take us out? Yes. Yeah, so, guys, you know what it is. Next week, Tuesday, we got another fabulous show coming to you. Uh, we are working on our website. We got the URL. So, that's coming soon. Uh, things are happening. Things are happening. Uh, yeah, so everything is going to start shifting over to the new uh, website. But once that is up, we're going to let you guys know. But as always, thank you for being here with us. Real talk where real recognizes real. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, later. See ya. Don't want to be ya. Well, maybe not today. But we will want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> we want you back, guys. You know how we do. We love to have Deuces. fun. <laughs> We got one minute, Carl. Yo, we like to have fun. We like to do it, y'all. We see y'all next week. Make sure y'all come back. Now, don't listen to Charlie. Y'all come back. (laughs)